Hey guys, and welcome back to another live stream. In today's live stream, we're going to be dealing with the address bus and uh, trying to build the decoders and everything to drive our uh, row, layer, and column signals for the memory. Uh, just before we do though, the only thing I've done uh, while off stream is uh, to build these little uh, kind of light up uh, circuits at either end and the reason I've done that is I needed to test the simulation distance within Minecraft to see how far away I am, you know, depending on where I'm standing, how far the simulation will stretch um, and the problem of course is if it's too, you know, if the circuit's too wide uh, then the simulation for parts of the um, computer might go out of range of where Minecraft is simulating and therefore stop simulating um, and that would result in part of our computer simulating and part of it just not uh, which would cause it to break obviously so what we can see here is that when I'm stood in the middle both of these are continuing to flash so that means the whole circuit is lying within the bounds of the simulation distance and I have increased the simulation distance to 12 chunks uh, in order for this to work the default is 10 um, but what we can see is here, this one's blinking. Uh, the other one was blinking, but it's paused. So if I'm exactly on the edge of this computer, uh, just here, then the very far bit is out of range. Um, and this is, you know, it's not a massive problem because we can just stand in the middle of the computer and, and everything will be in range. Um, but it is something for us to bear in mind when we're testing this later, that if we're standing right on the edge of the arithmetic unit for example then the simulation is only just within range if i go just a tiny bit further we'll see that that gets uh stuck when i'm actually you know roughly here um so i might even build a a kind of diamond thing to represent that that's really the simulation distance limit yeah because there we can see it's, it's now blinking again all right so uh let's get cracking today we're going to try and duplicate this entire thing, including all of the circuitry that is below us, which we mustn't forget about, all of this lot. And we're going to try and build four layers and then do the decoding. So that means we need to go from this point here downwards far enough that we cover the underside of this circuit, so that's this layer, and that's two blocks down, so we're going to copy from three blocks down. So if I build a block to stand on uh, at three blocks down, then that should tell us exactly where we're supposed to be. Uh, so I'll start by writing down that coordinate. Okay. And then I'm going to Oh, now what I've realized is that that's the kind of um maxima coordinate which is not massively helpful um because Minecraft changes the order in which you type in the coordinates, so I'm actually going to have to ignore that um, and copy from the upper corner over here which will be this one and this is where we also need to get the height precise and I'll go and write down the new lower coordinate later so just to be absolutely sure that is the upper limit and I'm going to place one block more. So, yeah, this is our kind of upper coordinate of 251, 43, 48. And now we're going to go and find that lower coordinate, 
which is all the way over in the far corner. And we can see as I fly across here, the numbers in the X and uh, Z are going down. So I'm definitely going in the right direction towards the lower coordinate there. And then again, we want this row here. If I could fly down through the hole. Um, and we want three blocks down. I'm never quite sure whether Minecraft gives me the coordinate of the one I'm standing on or... I think it gives me the coordinate of the one I'm standing on. Okay, so that's... Uh, have I picked the right... Yeah. So that's 198... Oops. 198... 30 minus 79. And then we need to work out where we're copying that to. And we can actually figure that out from the coordinates we've already got. Um, so in previous streams, I've then gone and flown to where I want it to be, uh, left or right. In this case, I'm going to try and calculate it. So uh, we know that we want the kind of X and Z to be exactly the same. It's the Y that we need to figure out. Um, so the Y coordinate, the height. Uh, so in this case, our um, upper point is at 43 and our lower point is at 30. So that's uh, 13 blocks difference. Um, but really we just, we know that we want the Y to be one above uh, one above the existing stuff. And I'm actually going to give us more space than that because we need to um, potentially link some signals through. So I'm going to give us uh, sort of uh, three block space by putting out a 46. Okay. So now we should be able to clone 198 30 minus 79 to 251, 43, 48, and then put that in the same X, a new Y, and the same Z. And with any luck, it will do it. Okay, perfect. And obviously it's also copied the plane of blocks we had in between. Um, that's not a particularly big deal. So we should see that we get one, two, three, four blocks and then our existing circuit and that's the amount of space I expected to leave in between. Okay, so it's kind of dark under there now but never mind. So the other thing I'm going to do is destroy this vertical because we don't really need it. All right, so that's our second layer of memory and we can do the third and fourth now, hopefully. Let's just quickly get rid of those bits. And hopefully I copied in far enough back that all these signals line up, yep. So for the third layer, uh, again, last time we went uh, three above uh, where we ended, so we had 13 in height, so we're going to add 13 plus 3, 16. Um, so that's going to give us 62, I think. So 46 plus 16, 62. And Minecraft's going to take a crazy amount of time it would seem to do the copying, but whatever. Okay, and hopefully we see that we'll get another four blocks. Perfect. So that all went as, as intended. So that's our third layer. 
And then for our fourth layer, same thing, add 16, giving us, uh, nope, 78, sorry. Uh, copy that. Give Minecraft a bit of time to figure itself out. Don't know why it takes it so long to just set a bunch of bo blocks, but okay. Right. So there we go, we now have a complete four layers of memory but with the data outputs and everything else not linked up. Okay, so the next step is to link the row enables together and to link the column enables together uh, going vertically. So for this we don't want to introduce a crazy amount of delay if we can avoid it. Um, so I'm going to build these incredibly irritating, but as efficient as you can reasonably get uh, spiral things. And I'm going to build them like this because then we have space to introduce repeaters when we need to. Interesting. Uh, let's just take it out then. And we'll link up all of this in a moment. Um, maybe I should have started at the bottom actually, because uh, then I can see how far the redstone will get. Whoops. So if this is our row enable power coming in, Okay, there's definitely going to need to be a repeater in here somewhere. Right, so the repeater needs to be in here. That's okay. Build one across, one up. And there we have it. And then continue the pattern, hopefully. This will now be in the wrong pattern, so that was a waste of a little bit of time. Never mind. Again, let's find out where the repeater needs to be. Okay, so it needs to be here.
Okay, and again, we can just hopefully copy and paste this. Now, the problem with copying and pasting this would be if it, if any of the required circuitry overlaps with another part that's different, um, but I don't think it is. I think it's all, all the layers are identical, so it should be fine. Um, so let's pick this as our copy point. Yeah. So this is, uh, again, this need notepad again. So we're going from 209, 41, 46, up to, and I need the outer edge here. So I need this bit up to two one five ninety fifty one. And we're copying that to so this horizontal and two blocks out, three blocks out. We get the exact position. Two, two, nine, forty one, forty six. <laughs> it didn't copy the bit beneath. Uh, that's that's silly. Anyway, so hopefully, if I've done that right, we now get a working row enable all the way up. Yeah. Okay. So. Our row enables are all connected and hopefully that switches off as well as on properly. Yeah. And now we need to do the column enables, which is a tiny bit more tricky because they're buried underneath bits of circuitry here. We also need to do the write operation, which is nearby. So let's give it a go. These need to be repeaters. And you know what? I'm going to do this on one of the other columns first, because they're the ones that have got um, that have got other circuitry around them, like overlapping here. Um, so this is where the column enable is. We can do the right enable separately. Uh, so we're going to bring the column enable out underneath all of this, and then we're going to start climbing. And I'm actually going to go one block further just on this first one so that we're offset from what's underneath. Uh, sorry, what's next to it. So this will be where our column enable signal comes in. A bit of power, give it a repeater so as a consistent power point.
See, this is why building a Minecraft computer takes so much time because there's just, it's just wiring. Like there's nothing massively conceptually difficult about everything. If you, if you get everything up to this point, then it doesn't get more complicated. It just gets more laborious. Okay, we almost have Ugh. Why does it keep double clicking like that? My mouse is having a problem today. Hey, this is the last layer, so I'm just going to make this slightly different because uh, it doesn't need to go up any further. Okay. So that's our column enable. Great. We're going to copy uh, this whole thing um, across on all of the layers. So our upper coordinate will be, uh, that's in line there, so it's this. So our upper coordinate is going to be here essentially. So uh, 203, 3, Our lower coordinate will be down here. Uh, sorry, here. Making sure I've come far enough over. So our lower coordinate is 194, 34, 10. Now we need to go and copy that to uh, the correct alignment and everything else. So it's in the kind of gap here. And we are one, two, three, four, five blocks out from this rear rail. So we're here, we're in the gap, we're one, two, three, four, five blocks out. Well, you know what, I can just use the same uh, X coordinate as I was doing before. So 194, uh, 34, and then it's just this Z that matters, like this left, right. Uh, so here I'm on minus 21. Oops, pressed enter too early. Uh, 203, 85, 13, 194, 34, minus 21. 178 blocks, blimey. Right, so now hopefully that stretches all the way up and has correctly copied in to there and why is that step down there? I get that, but I don't get the step. I don't get why there's a step down at that particular point. There's the diamond block, there's that. That's the layer enable, which should have been connected up. Oh, but this is all offset by one. Yeah, damn it. How did that happen? It should have been in minus 22 and as a result, has broken this bit. Blasted redstone. Am I 
gonna have to, I'm gonna have to do that on every every single one. All right, we'll deal with that in a second. Let me just go check that I've done it right on the first one. That goes up and over. That connects there, and then on the next one, one's kind of the same. And the power is still reaching. So now I need to go bug fix on this level. Okay, that might have fixed it. If I can not make the same mistake twice. I could have sworn I was copying in the right point, point though. So this is 35, uh, 11. What did I have before? 10. Ah, oh, so I set my copy point to be one further over than I thought it did. Okay. So we can account for that this time. Uh, so this time it's at minus 54. And we can go through and delete this extra circuitry that doesn't do anything. Um, I don't know why it copies the redstone wire as powered and doesn't recompute the state of it. Anyway, there we go. That should all stretch now. And with any luck, we can also switch it off for this column. So this is the point, if the clone had caused something to glitch, we'd see it still powered when we didn't mean to. Right, and that's still connected up correctly. Good. So those are our column enables. So we now have independent uh, column uh, and row enables, and we need to link up the write operation signals. Oh, and we also need to link up this one's column enable. So, This may break things slightly because the pattern here is slightly different from the others, but we'll see. So I was lined up with the right op before. Uh, so this is let me check that I've got that right. Yeah. Okay. And then this is the bit that's now messed up because this is not what this is supposed to look like.
make this just a tiny bit more consistent, I guess. Uh, let's delete this for a second. So we need to link up the layer enable, which we can bring back. And This is our layer enable clock clear. Um, this is our column enable for this column. And again, it's going to have screwed up the layout on each of these layers, but I'll deal with it in a minute when I've just finished uh, doing this one. And this is then the right operation. And the silly thing is that we actually need to be able to uh, connect up this right operation. I wonder why there was a step down there. It shouldn't have been. That's the first one. And that's the Third one. Okay. Right, so I'm going to correct this on each of the layers and then we can look at linking up this right operation in a vertical as well. Um, All right, so that's that one fixed. And the next one. No, that was the one I wanted. Whoopsie. It's 
this one, let me just delete it. Right, and now we need to link up the write operation because the write operation applies to the entire memory at once and we also have to link up the clear and clock signals because uh, those apply to the entire memory at once. So this came over into this column, so in order to avoid connecting by accident we need to go over into this column, we'll come this far out and just start building. And again, we're gonna create a little circuit here, consistent power, uh, let's make it line up with the other one. So I'll write enable Oh, I've not, <laughs> oh, I've got out of line. All right. So that's our write enable linked up across the all layers. Hopefully if I switch this off, we still get an off. I haven't accidentally connected it up anywhere that I didn't mean to. Yeah. Okay. And then 
the clock and clear signals also need linking up. So for this, I'm actually going to try and clone the kind of laborious part of this write enable, uh, and then I'll figure out how to link up the clock signals afterward uh, because it, it starts on this outer vertical. So um, what I want is from this block here, And now I have to be a little bit careful because I, if I copy too many, I'll end up uh, damaging one of my other columns. Um, so I only want the stuff that doesn't overlap with our existing circuit. And that's going to be to this point here. 197. 86, 40. I can see 194 to 197, that's th uh, three, four blocks. Is that right? Four blocks. Because I'm including the switch at the back. And 38 to 40 is exactly three blocks, which is good. So now I need to figure out the alignment of this. I know it's three blocks wide and I need at least a space in between them. So it needs to be into this column here, right? Yeah. So this column here is 34. So I'm going to go 194. 37, 34. Let's destroy these bits. Clone. 9, 4, 37, 38, 197, 86, 40, 194, 37, 34. Ah, right, I was, again, slightly off in my forgetting to include the bottom most. But that hasn't interfered with the column next to it, and it's not interfered with any of the wires and other bits, so hopefully... Uh, yeah, and it's not interfered with this stuff. So I'll, I'll deal with the clock in a moment, but we're going to need another one for clear. So again, let's go one lower. And uh, before we were going from 38 to 34. So we're going to go to 30. And there we go. We've got our next column over, so this will be clock, and this will be clear, and now I need to link those up. So uh, So that's the pattern for our clear. That's going to make life really difficult actually if I do it like that because now my data lines are... Well actually I can go up and over with the data lines as long as the clock goes down underneath.
just on this line, the, the clock, the data lines are going to have to dodge this clear signal. suspect this is going to run out of power before it reaches. Yeah. So on this one I'm just going to adjust the position of this repeater. It's a bit cheeky, but... There we go, that repeater in there is doing its job. Okay, so that's our clear signal, and now we're going to do the clock signal, which is underneath. Oh, because I moved this repeater one further back on the clock signal. Is that why that's happening? Yeah, I removed the repeater by accident. Um, First clock, that gets power, that's the next clock. And now we can do the last one. Which turns out to be a lot simpler. Okay, so we have separate, uh, uh, this is a column enable, and the same will be true down all of these columns. So we have separate layer enables for each layer. All of this is negative logic. We have separate column enables, which link to all of the layers. Uh, we have separated 
row enables, which link to all the layers. And we have uh, the clock and clear signals also linked up to all of the layers. So our challenge now is to bring the output of the uh, arithmetic unit and the output of the program counter, which is this register, uh, across, multiplex them together as we've seen in the data path video, and then decode them. Well, I'd actually like to build the decoder bits first, uh, because that way we can see where the um, where the address bus has to go, basically. So for these, for the row enables, it's actually quite simple because it's just a single bit to select one row or the other. So it's just going to be one uh, bit of our address signals, of our address bus, sorry. Uh, does this work? Yes, it does. I think. All right. So I'm going to replace that with a repeater so that we know where everything's aligned to and run a wire down here and place a repeater at the right point. Um, Although, again, I don't really need to use a repeater there because uh, this is an inverter. So we can just invert earlier on and link these up, um, provided, well, I guess there's going to have to be a repeater anyway, but um, uh, it doesn't really save anything, does it? It just makes it harder to understand. As long as that power is still reaching, oh, it's not. It's uh, well, like that's one block short, so it needs to be here. Sorry, to match the original. And now the power's going the full distance. There we go. Okay, so that's our row select. It's that one or this one, right? So uh, with the address bus bit as a zero, it will select the first row and not the other one. And with it as a one, it selects the far row and not the first one, because these are in negative logic here. So that one's really easy to decode. Uh, and we'll look at running this round later. Um, now we need to do the column enables, which there's four of them, so we're going to have two address wires, and it's going to look very much like this did before, just spread out over a much larger area. So let's uh, build our address wires first. So this is coming out here. Our address wires are going over the top. Am I about to leave enough space for this, for these signals? For the right clock and clear. Yeah, there should be enough space to step those up and over without interfering with the data lines that will come out later. So redstone wire goes along here. This is going to be address zero, so um, how did we do this before? So we step it down and use a repeater to stop it joining up. So what we want here is uh, 
Oh, we need an extra gap, don't we? Make this work. So when our address is zero, this uh, column enable is a zero, which means the column is enabled because the column enables are in negative logic. Um, and then these are gonna be our address bus signals. And it's really easy to turn these into normal kind of one gap signals uh, by doing this little step across. So now I'm just going to run these all the way to the other end so we can do the other column enables. There we go, yep. And that's as far as we need to go. So by having linked all of these things up vertically, it's now a bit easier to build this uh, address bus because we've only got to worry about doing the individual parts. Um, for, for one layer and then the others are going to sort themselves out. So this one really simple. We just put two inverters because this is going to be the maximum address and then we need to run this all the way down and on this one I'm going to stop when the power runs out to add in the repeaters So this stream is going to be a little bit longer than my other ones. My others were all about an hour and 10 minutes. This one's going to be longer because I'm going to keep going until we've got the uh, address bus done, including the multiplexing from the, uh, from the AU and everything. Um, otherwise this just is going to take too long. Uh, so now we need to select uh, it doesn't really matter which way around this happens, um, but it's convenient if uh, if we know which way around it is. Um, so if we'd read this as one zero, then this is, you know, if, if this was one zero, then it would be two, which would select that. Whereas if it was zero one, it would be one, which I want to select that one over there. So. In this case, one zero would look like uh, look like this, I guess. Whoops. So we'll test that in a moment. Um, let's just build the other one as zero one. So in that case, this one steps down. And this one gets a torch. Okay, and now if I go, well, I can test these just by breaking the wires essentially. <laughs> um, so one, in this case, zero, one, that gets enabled. There's negative logic. Um, and then in this case, one, zero, that gets enabled. Zero, one, it doesn't. Zero, zero, it also doesn't. 
and there's no interference of power here. And then the last one is is kind of obviously uh, going to work, except that the power's run out like two blocks too soon. Which I'm going to fix by not adding repeaters, but by shifting this enable wire over. So this is why these repeaters are useful because I can shift this one and know that the power is still going to reach all the way around there. Likewise this one. And then it will still reach up the verticals. Yeah, it still climbs all the way up the way it's supposed to. Okay, so we've done our row address, we've done our column address, we've not yet brought them down into a single uh, into a single bus, uh, but we can do that fairly easily. So this is where I want the row wire to end up. Um, let's bring that up like this. Bring that like that. This can come back to here, this can come back to here. And for this, I'm actually going to work backwards. Uh, so if I want the power to reach this block, just be a bit conservative. I'm just going to see where the repeater would be needed back here. So See if I power this. Yeah. Okay, so this is our first three bits of our address bus, and now we need to do the um, the layer enable bits. Uh, which is a little bit more tricky because the layer enable goes vertically. Um, so the layer enable is also two bits because there's four layers. Um, and it's a similar pattern, but I'm going to have to figure out how to make it vertical. So let's bring this one across. This is our zero zero. So in the same way as the column enable, we're going to uh, build this out by stepping down in the right places. Uh, and we want an extra gap So that we can place a repeater there. Place a block here, and this becomes a repeater. Okay, so we should see that this column gets disabled. Sorry, this layer gets disabled if either of these bits is on. Alrighty. And now we need to do the other layers. Um, so to do that we're going to use a slightly different pattern to go up and down.
and I want to bring out the layer enables from each of these just so I can see where they are. I'll trim them back in a moment. So again, this is going to be zero one. Um, so what we want is uh, to do this kind of pattern. Um, yeah. So what's happened here is I've placed the repeater on the wrong side of the uh, on the wrong side of the junction, and so it's not boosting power the way I intended it to. So I'm just shifting everything to make it line up so that the power gets boosted as intended. Now it should reach, yep, yeah, it reaches the next repeater down the line. Okay, so this is our pattern, and um, like to oscillate back and forth, we have to use the repeater in this style, I think, otherwise, it doesn't power the block. Um, yeah. So uh, to do that, I'm going to place stone wire there. Hmm. That should work.
Okay, and we know that this is just going to be inverted on the end, so I can do this, but um, I need to make sure that this isn't going to link backwards by accident. Um, So now if I unpower that, it should reach all the way. And then there's this layer, which there's plenty of space around here. So uh, I'm going to deal power like this. And I'm also going to make sure that that doesn't connect up. Otherwise it would form an infinite loop of power. Don't need that block apparently. Um, And for this, so if this layer is zero, 0, this is zero, 1, this is 1, 0, so we need the um, inverter style. Do we? No, I feel like I've done this wrong. This should have been the inverter inverter style. This one should have been the inverter style to get this to work. This one should be the repeater style. Okay, so let's follow the same pattern for the next. Um, can I be bothered to clone this? Yeah, I probably can. Um, so this block here, but down one. Uh, oh, but I need to go all the way across. I need to go across until I'm underneath the farthest extent, which is there, apparently. So this is 186, 36, 29. I don't really want to copy all of these blocks. And then I need this. And this is 186, 83, 46. And we're just going to copy that two blocks across. Uh, so that's going to be 184. That's E629. Okay, and then we need to go through fixing up the addressing. So uh, uh. All right, well, I'm going to have to step these back across in various places, never mind. Um, this is getting a bit messy, but well, I don't really like using clone commands in general. But never mind. Looks like the power's falling short here. Um, the easiest solution is to stick in a repeater. So zero zero 
one zero, this is the repeater style thing that we needed, um, which in this case is going to be okay. Um, this is just to stop this linking up backwards, basically. Um, this is one zero. This is inverter style. And we're going to take it from the opposite side this time. Um, so this side. We're not going to need that block. And then it should be 1-1 one, one at the top. So we're currently inputting 1-1 one, one on the address lines there. So this layer is enabled. And at the moment, we have 1-1-1-1-1. Uh, one, 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 one. So what that tells us is that the last, so it's this row, the final column, and the topmost layer that should be enabled. So if I fly all the way over here, I should see that uh, the last byte of all of this should be enabled at the moment to read. The write of operation is disabled. And uh, is that what I'm getting? This is zero, so that's enabled, and hopefully this is disabled. Yep, so all the ones around me are disabled, and this one's the one that's enabled, and we've written apparently all ones to it at the moment. So if I give it a different pattern on that column, again, we're gonna have to link up all the data lines uh, for the inputs and outputs here but I'm not doing that today. Um, this is gonna take an immense length of time to wire everything together. So we're gonna enable the write, and we're going to uh, write something. So I'm giving it a very slow clock pulse there just to make sure that the clock hopefully correctly reaches all the way down. Uh, I might not have done. Possible that the clock hasn't worked here, so... Ah, the, the right enable doesn't appear to have worked. Um, because it's... What well, has it? So the right enable is low, which is correct. The... However, the clear signal is low. What? Oh. Clear signal is low because this repeater is further back than it should be. So this topmost layer the clear signal, I adjusted the position of the repeater and thought it was okay, but I forgot that it stretches off in this direction as well, which is going to result in everything being slightly misplaced. And as a result, our right won't won't have worked because it thought that the clear signal was being set. Obviously it wasn't supposed to be. Right, 
Okay, so the clear is now disabled and we should see one of these clock lines, low, one high, good. So uh, we can see that just because of the way altering the clear signal works, that has actually saved the data. Um, again, I'm going to flip all the bits so that we can see whether the clock itself actually works. So all of these should invert in a moment when we pulse this clock down here. So this is our clock. Pulse the clock. and hope that that pulse reached all the way up here, which might not have done, did it? So our inputs were starting at a one. Okay, yeah, so our, our clock reached here and saved the data before we could even fly here, which is good. And now if I, I'll tell you what, I'll fly back. If I flip all the data again and disable the right, we're going to test that it doesn't write anything and we've already seen that the clear is functioning. So disable the right, I'm going to wait for that to propagate and now I'm going to pulse the clock. So the clock pulse itself doesn't have to be very long um, the challenge is going to be timing the clock so that it reaches the entire computer before the next clock edge. As we said, the inputs and outputs all have to be stable on a flip-flop. Okay, so that didn't save the data, which is what we expected. Um, good. So... Now I'm going to pulse the clear and then write to one cell, uh, I think. So let's do a clear. That should turn off all of the outputs, which it has. We can see that from underneath. From over here, we can see those lamps aren't switched on. At least I think we can. Weird lighting. All right, and then go back. to over here, I'm going to enable the right and I'm gonna switch which row we're writing to. And pulse the clock. And that should now have written to the first row, same column, same layer. And we'll also be reading from that. Uh, so it should have written the kind of one zero path, one zero, one zero, one zero, which it has. So that row is also working. Uh, great. I'm not going to go testing every single byte right now. Um, I'm going to have some blind faith that it all works. Um, which may not be well-placed faith, but there's lots more still to do here. Okay, so let's destroy this bit of pointless decoder demonstration before we move on to the address line stuff. Now, as you may have noticed, we have four layers, four columns, Two rows that gives us 32 bytes of RAM but with an 8-bit address we could address 256 bytes of RAM. So we actually don't need as many um, address bits as, 
of eight. We only need one, two, three, four, five, as, as we've seen. Um, so I'm not going to build this for every single possible address line. Now that was supposed to enable this layer. And then this is supposed to enable this layer. Good. So I've fixed a small bug there because I had a missing piece of wire. Um, and we've linked together all the column enables, so that's not going to be a problem. Right. So to build a multiplexer, uh, what we have to do is have two sets of wires coming in. I mean, the multiplexer is essentially what we built here, right? So you have um, the what the options coming in horizontally next to each other here. So you've got PC reg, O reg, and there's actually more possibilities here than there is in, in module sim because I built the, this multiplexer for everything. Uh, for every register to be able to write to A or B, whereas in module sim only some of the registers can be used for the A and B inputs to the arithmetic unit. So um, you have them coming across and you put torches underneath and then the lines you want coming in. So here we need enough space for five bits to come in and then another five bits so we need at least 10 uh, blocks for each. So we need at least 20 blocks. And I may not have left enough space. One, two, three, four. So that's the space we need uh, at a minimum. Right, this, this is going to be really tight to make this fit. Um, so, fortunately the data inputs for the memory only ever come from the A register, so we're not going to have the same problem on, on the inputs here. Um, I also know that this carry here isn't just, just isn't going to be used, um, so I can delete those torches. Um, and we're going one block further up. So this is how this pattern comes together. Oops. The way it works is you have the the kind of value coming in one side like this, and then you have the selector on the other side where it's all linked together. And it's just an AND gate, essentially. Um, but the, the values here are actually inverted. So I'll build the inverters for them in a moment. I just want to check that we're going to have enough space. If this turns out to be block perfect, it will be an immense coincidence. Uh, but a pretty awesome coincidence if it is exactly right. Um, so now if I have the PC coming, so the PC is going to come in from the opposite side. Um, so one of these is for the AU output and the other one is for the PC. And the only thing I've got to make sure is that the kind of ordering matches up because otherwise I'll be flipping the order of the bits which would be bad news. So oh, it's aligned. So 
that almost worked, except that this one needs to power the thing above it there. So these all provide power, and then uh, these lines run across like this. And, uh, well, as it turns out, we run out of power just at the last moment there. Whoops. Okay, I'm not going to worry about the fact that there's multiple repeaters uh, really close together here. It's just not worth the effort of trying to go and fix it all right now. Okay, that all works. And now I can build the inverses here. Whoops. Okay, and then So the program counter register will actually provide inverted outputs. So for this one, I'm not going to need uh, to invert before putting them in here. It was one of the reasons why storing the inverted value in the in the registers is useful uh, because it just makes building the muxes following it really simple. Uh, and that's an example where at the module level the muxes and uh, and so on. If you just uh, built all the transistors for all of the modules, you'd end up with more than you actually needed uh, and a slower circuit. And so in modern uh, design automation tools, they would eliminate as much as possible of that duplication. So this is a U select. And on the other side, we're going to have the PC select. Obviously, these will actually always be uh, they'll actually always be opposites of each other. Um, because you have to select one or the other. You can't select both, and you're never going to want to select neither. Um, so I'm going to go and figure out how to build that now. Um, I think the easiest is to run a wire down here and then cut it off from everything next to it. Uh, oh, maybe not this one, because that's between data lines. If I do it on, if I do it down here, it won't be interfering with the data lines at all. Cut that off, and then we run it all the way down here. And well, actually, I don't need to because I can apply an inverter on that there, and that works. Oh, that's neat. So there you go, it's always one or the other. Um, I don't know whether there's a repeater needed. 
There is. Okay, and uh, we need that to be flowing in there. So now it's selecting one or the other, and if we turn these on, so to speak, we set these to ones we should see that yeah so the address is powered there this is inverted from so also powered in that case brilliant And if I input some other kind of address here, doesn't matter because at the moment this isn't selected, and then I select it and I get the same address pattern. Now, I need to be careful with how I map the bits here because here, this is the low bit and it needs to end up on this one here. And this one doesn't go directly to the high bit, it actually goes to the one, two, three, four, fifth bit here. So uh, we step this down. So we are going to need multiple copies of this at some point. I'm not going to worry about that right now. I'm just going to try and build these connections and then figure out how to get other copies of the wires later because obviously the output of the arithmetic unit has to be taken back round as a data input to the um, to the registers and I'd also quite like to be able to do a calculation on these um, so that I can test that the power will reaches and where the repeaters are needed. All right, so uh, one thing I can do is write some data to some registers and do a calculation that way. Um, so I'm going to select the A input to be the operand register and we're going to see that at the moment they're all written apparently. Uh, apparently it's written with ones, okay, fine. Um, and we're doing an addition, so we're going to end up with all ones on the outputs, meaning I can just go and build repeaters in the right places now.
Okay, so that's the output from the arithmetic unit set up for the address lines there. Okay, so the last part of this is to link up uh, the five bits from the program counter register, which is this register here. And uh, I need to figure out how to get another copy of this out uh, from, the, from this. And then the other thing as well is that the module sim design requires even more copies of the program counter register, because at some point I've got to do the PC increment going back the other way. So the, the PC increment, the actual adders will be built directly above the PC register, come back down here, and then be multiplexed into uh, this uh, kind of data input um, for the PC register. So what I'd like to do is take a copy of this register going downwards, um, I think that's going to be easiest. I don't know why there's a random bit of wire there. That's kind of concerning that there's on all of these just extra bits of wire lying around. I must have cloned it by accident. Let's just remove all of these random bits of unnecessary redstone. Okay, so I'm gonna try and take a copy of the lowest five bits, these low five bits out uh, by going downwards um, from this here. So first one would be easy. Build my build a little escape hole, um, and then the next ones are a bit more challenging um, potentially. Well, actually, maybe not. Maybe I can utilize the existing structure. Um, because here we've got space where it's any wire going down isn't going to connect uh, to the thing next to it. So I can utilize that to make this copy without conflict. So and do the same trick all the way across on each of these. Whoops. And we only need five. So one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, five. So I don't need this one. Yeah, I don't need that one. Now I just have to build this out correctly. Whoops. And again, these are already inverted outputs from the registers because uh, they go directly into other muxes as well. Um, so this is going to be nice and easy to wire across. And now I need to uh, bring these down in the right places. Um,
and these need to swing across to here. So if I bring this out and bring this across, hopefully I'm going to have enough space to do all of this, which I do. Right, and now I want to actually select something to output on the program counter register. Again, it's probably been programmed with all ones. Yes, it has. Uh, let's turn that off. And let's select this set of wires. Now, the trouble with that is the outputs on the registers are inverted. But let's see. Yeah, so if I actually want this to work, I've got to program it with zeros in order to be able to see power coming out of the program counter register. So uh, pulse the clock, and now I should see uh, zeros from the program counter. So I don't actually need this, do I? I can leave that like that. Uh, so now the Inverted outputs are all powered, which means they're all ones. Uh, so I just need to build the redstone wires with all the right repeaters um, in order to get that power across to the address bus.
Great, so now we have the address bus connected up and if I go and program this with some kind of valid memory address, uh, in which case I'm going to do uh, just usual kind of thing of alternating ones and zeros and pulse whichever one I've chosen to be the clock. Um, we should see that the address gets set to the same pattern over here of one zero one. Uh, yeah, so one zero one zero one. And what I also want to do is check that I got the address bits in the right order for this. Um, so I'm going to set the bottom three bits and leave the upper two bits off. And yeah, we see the bottom three bits on and upper two bits off. And I know it's asymmetric, but so that proves it, but it's going to do the bottom most bit as well on its own check. I didn't get any interference. Yes, perfect. Okay, so there we have our address lines and memory addressing done. Uh, it's taken two hours today to get all of that done. So we duplicated the layers, connected up the clock, clear, write operation, uh, column enable, row enable, and layer enable signals, uh, tested that that all worked, and then we built the multiplexer from the arithmetic unit and the program counter for the five address bits, uh, and that all seems to work. And uh, somewhere along the road, Minecraft gave up simulating this clock circuit correctly, which is a bit strange, because it was originally just a a pulse. <laughs> um, and it's also got stuck on simulating something in the middle of all of this. But let's just clear it out and see whether that stabilizes everything. And then hopefully nothing gets stuck. If you see any kind of blinking in here, it means that that clear signal got mistimed somewhere or missimulated, and uh, that would be a really serious problem. Again, it seems to have failed to continue simulating this correctly. Just a tad for it's both worrying and frustrating. Um, so we're correctly simulating that blinking, that blinking, and the memory. So there we have it. That is the memory, all within the simulation distance, uh, the four registers, and the arithmetic unit. Um, what have we left to do on the data path? Well, we've got to connect all of the data inputs to the output or a copy of the output from the A register. Um, we've got to connect up all the data outputs and bring them back around. And then we've got to be able to select the inputs for the A and B registers as being either from the memory or from the arithmetic unit. Uh, so that means taking a copy of the output of the arithmetic unit and bringing it back around. Um, and then we also need to be able to select the program counter to update from either the program counter increment, which needs building, or from the uh, arithmetic unit itself. And the operand register needs to uh, actually be modified so that the low and high bits are enabled independently and we need to take a copy of the low bits and bring it round to plug it into the high bits, uh, accounting for the inversion. And the low bits need to be able to update from the value coming from memory. So there's still quite a lot of wiring to do, 
to get all of that connected up um, just to get the data path complete. However, once we've done the data path, uh, it's then a short kind of run to the finish line to get the uh, clock phase generation done with the shift register. That's fairly easy. And to get the control signals done. So that means taking the value out of memory, saving it into the opcode register, decoding it into one hot signals, and then routing those one hot signals into the various places needed to set the control signals to our data path. So lots left to do. Uh, this was day five. So we've got five days left. Seems to be going quite well so far for time and it's all fitting within the simulation. This is now the extent of the size of this machine, basically. Um, it doesn't need to expand massively further in any direction um, to make this work. Great, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, see you in tomorrow's stream, um, and continue watching the design videos to understand more about how this works. Uh, the remaining design videos are fairly short as well, um, because there's not a huge amount more for me to tell you. Um, great. Bye.